Saturday, I'm paying my first visit to Lady Walk Nature Reserve, which is around 10 miles from Birmingham city centre. The reserve sits in a loop formed by the River Tame and is an integral part of the important wildlife area known as the Tame Valley Wetland. I'm taking the riverside path that leads down to the reserve proper and in the trees overhead, a small flock of long-tailed tit feed. Long-tailed tit can be notoriously difficult to film as they're always on the move as they search for their diet of insects and also in autumn and winter, seeds. And the river tame affords views of gadwall as they make their way up river. And a little further downstream, teal feed. It's a gloomy January morning and behind the cloud the sun has just risen. It's always good to visit a reserve for the first time but as you can see this is a private reserve that my friend Simon Watts has kindly arranged a guest permit for today. But not only am I meeting up with Simon but today we're both meeting up with fellow wildlife filmmaker, bird ringer and all round nature enthusiast Stuart Abbott. We're all mutual subscribers to each other's channels on YouTube, but this is Simon and I's first face-to-face -face meeting with Stuart. So let's head out on the reserve. We're checking out Hyde A first, and almost immediately there's wildlife to see. It's a female munchak, also known as a barking deer, and it's come to feed on droppings from the bird feeders. The feeders are attracting a good mix of birds. We've got great tit, and it's great to see greenfinch, a species I haven't seen much of locally recently, and also reed bunting. This is a female, and there's a male hidden on the far side of the feeder. And here's another, and the black head will get much blacker as we move into the breeding season. On looking out, there seems to be quite a large cormorant roost. And out on the lake, we see a male mandarin duck, a real dandy of a bird. Just look at that plumage. And of course the mandarin duck isn't native to the UK. They were introduced here from the far east. The female lacks this bright plumage. Looking further out we have coot, widgeon, herring gull, black-headed gull and mallard. And the male mandarin now feeds at the water's edge. As mentioned earlier, they're from the far east and can be found in China, Japan, Korea and parts of Russia. Other wildfowl on view are these male shoveler, now resplendent in full breeding plumage, and among the grass that surrounds the water, a hen pheasant feeds. We also have a pair of Canada geese at the water's edge, and that distinctive fluting call heralds the arrival of a small flock of teal. And now it's time to move on. This is the view from Hyde B, which overlooks the large area of water, along with areas of reed bed. The grey heron stands sentinel, perched on one leg, and at the water's edge, shoveler does. And just in front of the hide, a coot dives, but we've just noticed on the feeders outside the hide is a little bird that I was really hoping to see. I've left the hide, and I've set my camera up, looking across at the feeders. There's no sign of the bird at the moment, just this robin. But literally, after only a minute, my very first view of the red status willow tit, similar to the marsh tit, but with subtle differences. There's certainly a good mix of birds coming to these feeders, while it's nut hatch. In the surrounding branches, a chaffinch waits its turn, and I don't have to wait too long before the willow tit returns. Like most tit species, the bird will come in, grab a seed, and then take it to a nearby branch to eat. 
as does the blue tit. And now here's the scourge of bird feeders. The grey squirrel has taken over, much to the disapproval of the nuthatch. And here's the willow tit again feeding in the surrounding branches. Anyone interested in the conservation of this red status bird should check out Simon Watts on a tree by a river series and I'll put a link below. Well, I was just filming the fine mix of birds coming to the feeders here when Simon and Stuart called me back into the hide to witness the action that was going on in front of the hide. And here's a bird I haven't seen or filmed for quite a while. It's a water rail. Not a particularly rare bird, but they're so difficult to see. They're normally skulking around deep in the reeds, so it's a real treat to see one out in the open like this. Normally, you're more likely to hear them and see them. They can make a series of sounds, from grunts and groans to purring and piglet squealing. The water rail is actually a small relative of the moorhen and the coot. They're a freshwater wetland bird and they feed on invertebrates and small fish. And water rails are very rarely seen in flight as they prefer to migrate under the cover of darkness. And as the water rail disappears into the reeds, we're once again joined by a female muntjack deer. Quite possibly could be the same one we saw from the previous hide. But now we're going to leave the muntjack to its feeding. We're going to make our way back through the woodland. We're just heading back through the woodland when we saw a flock of red wing and this one obligingly stays put in the tree. When we first arrived, I saw a grey wagtail by the river's edge. I couldn't get the camera on it, so I'm heading back to the river now to try and put that right before we head home. And there we are, a grey wagtail. What a gorgeous little bird to end this film on. Hope you enjoyed it. Great to meet up with Simon and Stuart. I'm sure we'll do it again soon, and I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.